Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is enabling Easy Auth for Azure Logic App Standard. This allows us to go ahead and secure HTTP endpoints with Azure Active Directory. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So I previously discussed how you can use Azure AD to secure our HTTP triggers in the consumption SKU of Logic Apps. And this particular video had uh, you know, some really good traction, so thanks people for checking it out. One of the questions I did get was like, okay, this is great, but how do I do this for standard? And so the good news is that there is a way to do this uh, through an API. And so we're gonna talk about how we can call this API to enable the settings for a particular logic app. Now, in the future, I do expect this experience to be in the portal, so we'll have more of a UX around it. But if this is a feature that you're really interested in having, we can go ahead and unlock that for you today. And part of the reason why we can, we're able to do this is that Easy Auth is nothing new. This has been around app service for quite some time. And because the standard SKU of logic apps, also known as single tenant logic apps, is built on app service and the functions runtime, we're able to take advantage of these existing investments. So sometimes people ask, well, why go to standard? Well, this would be one of it, is that we're able to take advantage of things like Easy Auth. So let's go ahead, let's dive in deeper. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and create a logic app. Now, what we're talking about here is standard uh, workflow. Like I said, if you're using consumption, Go ahead and check out the video I talked about on the previous slide. The logic app, the workflow will be quite simple, just an HTTP request. You're going to then have a response. I'm just returning hello world. Uh, don't overcomplicate it until you get this sorted out. Just keep it simple. Then go into Postman, copy your URL from your trigger, go ahead and test it, and make sure that you get a response back. Uh, in my case, it's hello world. And then at least this way, we know we've got a working logic app before we go ahead and start. So that's really step number one. Now, step number two is we're gonna need to go ahead and create a service principle. We're gonna need to do this inside of Azure. We'll go ahead, we'll register an application. We will then go ahead and collect some information for it. I'll, I'll show you here right away in the, in the portal itself. But uh, we can just use accounts in this organizational directory. We don't need a redirect URI. Um, we are going to need these values here. So our application or client ID, the directory tenant ID we will also need to know. And the other piece of information that we're gonna need to know is a secret. So if we go ahead and click on certificates and secrets, then we can go ahead and create new, so new client secret. Go ahead, copy this value, and uh, put it away in a, in a safe place because we'll, we'll need this a little bit later. Okay, so here I'm in Azure Active Directory. I can go ahead and click on App Registrations. Then I can go ahead and click New Registration. That's uh, the, the one that I was referring to before. Now, in terms of you know what I've gone ahead and done, this is where I've you know created my own Logic Apps Easy Auth. Doesn't really matter what you go ahead and call it, but this is where you'll go ahead and collect the information that you need. And then over here, this is where you'll go ahead and create your certificates and secrets. All right. So the next step that we need to do is we need to go ahead and generate a token based upon the information from our app registration that we just created. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to go back into Postman. You're going to then, and you can parameterize all of this. I, I didn't do it for this video, but I think in the other one I did. So you can use the variables if you want, but for now, just to, um, I'm just showing the hard-coded values because I think it helps sort of map these concepts together. So first thing we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and perform a get on this specific endpoint. So basically login.microsoftonline.com then our tenant ID, this is a variable from a previous example, so you plug in your tenant ID, and then basically slash OAuth2 slash token. Now, we're gonna use a xwww-form-url encoded type of payload, and so here we've got these key value pairs. So the key will be grant underscore type, it's gonna be of type client credentials, that's hard-coded, 
Then we go ahead, we grab that client ID from the app registration that we just created. Same thing with that secret. Uh, those are two values that are, are critical here. And then what we're going to do is specify a resource of HTTPS slash slash management.azure.com. So this is going to create a token for us that um, will be used in the management plane of Azure. Now, what I'm going to do next though is we're going to use this token, I guess, to feed into some other configuration later on. So what you can do for now is go ahead and copy this token. You don't need the access underscore token uh, JSON thing, just the, the value itself. So just copy that out, put it into you know Notepad for now, and we're going to use this in a bit. Do note that these tokens do expire. So from time to time, you're gonna to have to go ahead and regenerate a token. Certainly, if you were to call this Logic App, uh, we're gonna, you know, you can go ahead and do this um, from another Logic App or use the HTTP connector to go ahead and extract this value as well. But uh, this is what the token that we're gonna need. So we'll flip to the next slide because this is important. We're gonna need this token next. What we need to do now is inspect this token. And we're gonna use the value from this token in our next exercise where we have to go ahead and call a REST API to modify the behavior of our standard logic app to basically use this Azure AD authentication itself. So I've called out some specific points here. Um, go to a website called jwt.ms. You can paste the token in. Now, tokens typically are you know quite sensitive. You know, in this case, the values never leave your browser. Uh, so I don't think you there's an overly concern here, but um, just be aware of that. What we're taking this token is it's basically going to be decoded and broken apart. And we can see the actual payload that represents this token. And when we basically decode the token, this is where this there's some valuable information in here. And so I've called things out that we're going to need. So once again, you can grab your notepad and copy some of these values out. So of particular importance is this audience value. So HTTPS management.azure.com. That's what we're gonna use. We're also gonna use this issuer ID. And this is where we get into the sts.windows.net URL. And then we've got the tenant ID here as well. And really how I got to this point, maybe you won't need to do this because I'm, well, I guess you will need to do it. But um, you know, before I was confused about like the token service and what was my issuer ID. And in the previous video where I was using consumption logic apps, you can go ahead and change metadata. Um, and so what happens when you change the metadata for the token service, whether it's version one or version two, the issuer ID changes. And that's where I was really confused about this as I was going up, am I using version one or version two? But when I went ahead and unpacked this, I was able to then go ahead and see what my issuer ID was. And so uh, through this tool really helped me from that regard. The other thing that's gonna be really important to us here is this object ID. And uh, this ID we're gonna need in the next payload as well. So using this, this website to extract the token uh, is super important for us and do make note of these different data attributes. Okay, so the next piece here, and this is where there is a, a link to uh, basically a, a blog post from an engineer on the Logic Apps team that describes this payload in more details. But what I found was that some of these values were basically obfuscated. So it's kind of understand, hard to understand where I was supposed to get them from. And uh, so I'm gonna flip over just to my payload just to show you folks about this. But um, this is gonna be critical. I'll include both URLs in the description of this video so that you don't have to type it all out by hand. But do note, um, just to sort of explain things here, we're gonna have to call this endpoint. We're gonna have to call it make a put operation. And here we can see that we've got some values that need to be replaced. So the we've got the subscription ID, uh, so that represents this value. We've got the resource group, you know, which is, is this value, this is mine, you're gonna have to plug in your own. And then we also have the logic app name itself. Now mine's, it's cut off here, but uh, mine, I think, is called secure-http, something like that. And then here we can say we're going to update these auth settings and uh, provide the value. So let me flip over to Postman. I'll show you what my payload looks like. Okay, so here we are in Postman. Uh, I talked about the URL already. Uh, next, the things that we have to update is this ID. 
URL, right? So this is going to look similar to our URL in our when we make the call itself. So we've got the subscription, we've got the resource group, and we've got the name of the logic app. So not the sorry, the not the workflow name, but the logic app standard name. So that's something that you do need to uh, to change. Uh, this section remains the same. Uh, don't touch that. Here we've got the open ID issuer. So I talked about this before, you know, sts.windows.net. Then your tenant ID, uh, this is mine. The client ID, so this is that object ID. This is where I was a little confused as well. This client ID is the object ID from that return call when we went ahead and um, explored our token. That is that value. This isn't the client ID for the app registration that we created before. And so this is one thing that hung me up. And then so the other thing was the allowed audiences. So when we generated our token, we generated it for management.azure.com. Doesn't hurt to have another management plane here, but uh, you know this is really the one that I was using in my example. And then also the allowed identities. Who are we going to allow to call this logic app? And really this is the same value. It's from that token itself. So you can really start to understand why parsing that token and decoding it was so important in terms of configuring this. Because what you're basically saying is that you know, for a token that's been generated, what am I going to validate? And is the information that I validate going to match? And so if you generate a token where these values aren't present, then naturally this stuff's going to fail, right? On purpose, for a good reason, because you essentially haven't presented the right token. And so that's what's really important about all of this. Now, the, the next thing, so I can go ahead and run this. Now, we'll see here. Uh, I did this a little bit on purpose that my token has expired. So what is the token that I need to use for this specific call? Because at this point, remember, I'm not calling my logic app. I'm not executing my logic app yet. I'm really just going to go ahead and configure the uh, basically the auth settings for that specific logic app. So let's uh, flip back to the slides. here. Now, there's probably a few different ways of doing this. Um, I felt this was like a, a simple way of doing it. This is essentially like a one-time operation. Uh, so I don't really need to generate some automation around this. But um, what I've done, I've logged into the Azure portal. I've now basically uh, started up Cloud Shell, which is, is pretty cool, right? So we've got this command line experience that's available to us in the Azure portal. Now, I've logged in with my credentials. And in this case, you know, my, my account does have like good access. But what I can do is generate like an ad hoc uh, token. And so this token uh, will expire. So it's one of those things where there will be a time to live. But by issuing the following command, az space account space get dash access dash token, I can just grab this one time, this token that has a short time to live. I can then go ahead and copy it. When I go ahead and copy this token, I can then use it now as a bear token on my uh, API call inside of Postman itself. Okay, so I take the output from that command line call that I just made and I paste it into my authorization header. So I need a bearer token and then I can just go ahead and paste it. And when I specify bearer token here, I don't need to include the word bearer to begin with. So this will include my entire uh, token. So we can go back now and, and make this call. And when we do it, essentially what we're going to get is like an echo back, basically just playing back our config. So here we can see that it's a 200 OK. It will take a couple seconds to run. But uh, basically, you get this, you, you know that your configuration was updated successfully. If you have an error here, then, then naturally um, that may not be the, the case. So uh, that's important. So now what we've got, we've enabled our logic app to essentially use Azure AD authentication uh, when making requests. And so basically a bear token, a valid bear token can be passed to our logic app and we use that um, from an authentication perspective itself. All right, so now we're almost ready to call our logic app. But once again, we need a token. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make an assumption that the first time you made this call, because you've already made this call before, 
your token is probably expired. Now, depending upon how long it took you to do those other steps, um, maybe it's still alive, but I'm assuming you're gonna need a new token. So once again, log on .microsoftonline.com, you know, use that client and secret info that you created previously, go ahead and make a call, grab a token. So you can go ahead and copy this token from the response. And now what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to go ahead and call our logic app. Now, notice I've removed the signature, right? So that's, you know, the SAS token that's, that was previously there. Uh, so that's now gone. I've used, you know, in this case I'm using authorization and then I'm having bearer and the token itself. So the token that we just copied from the previous step. If I go ahead and make a post call against my logic app, we should see hello world return. So let's flip over to Postman and check that out. Okay, in Postman, here's my URL, right? So there's no SAS signature here. I've got my bearer token that I've copied. We head over to params, right? All we have is this API version. We don't have, you know, anything else. Uh, it is a post, so there's no body, but let's go ahead and just call it. Call it a few times here and see that it's uh, it's being called. Then we can see, you know, 1107, 1107, you know, those calls were successful. We can go ahead, look at the run history, etc. Now, something to note is that the SAS token still will work, right? So here is the URL where I have the SAS token that is being sent in. So that still will work. Now, you know, if you really want to prevent this, and I talk about this in the other video, so I'll refer to you as that. Basically, what you can do on your in your logic app itself is use a trigger condition that basically looks for the existence of a bear token. And so if someone passes a bad bear token, you're not even going to reach that point. Uh, so it has to be a valid bear token, and then you can check for the existence of a bear token. And um, if that's the case, then you know that uh, it was an authenticated request. So that would be sort of a safeguard to ensure that someone doesn't use the SAS token itself. But really what this also means is that when you provide URLs or endpoints to say other consumers, uh, you're not actually sharing the SAS token. So there's a much smaller surface area for anything bad to happen from that perspective. All right, well that concludes this episode. Hope you found it interesting. I did have some requests for this. When I talked about consumption, oh, wouldn't it be great if this was supported for SA or sorry, for standard? And uh, well, it is, and it's kind of the benefits of uh, the capabilities that exist in the Azure Functions runtime and app service in general. So because uh, standard is built on that platform, some of these things have just sort of come along for the ride. And um, one thing to note, you know, as I talked about before, is this is just the current experience. I do anticipate in the future we'll see something that's uh, more in the portal. But for those of you that are really looking to use this type of approach, you can go ahead and do so now. You don't have to wait. So that's, that's it for this video. Uh, like, subscribe, comments, always welcome. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me there as well. See you soon.